Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special show today. Uh, our guest is Michael Horn, who is recognized as one of the world's leading authorities on UFOs, which are now called UAVs or whatever the heck they want to call them these days. And he has over 40 years of experience as a science researcher. He began his study and research into what are known as the Billy Meyer UFO contacts back in 1979. Many of you may know about the Billy Meyer story. Uh, but another interesting claim here is that Michael likes to say that he is the only UFO researcher to be interrogated for three months by the U.S. intelligence. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate being here. Yeah, it's a, it's a great little uh, hook there, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, what happened with the interrogation? Well, let me explain. Um, back in January of 2017 on a Saturday morning, uh, about 8.30 a.m., I got a call from a guy who I didn't know. His voice was uh, a little, let's say, rough. And uh, he only said his name was Joe, that he was an investigator. He wanted to know if I would be willing to speak about the Meyer contacts with him because I was the representative for the case. And I said, I would. And then he came back and he said, are you sure? And I said, well, why do you ask twice? He says, because I think it's a roaring hoax. <laughs> I said, well, let's go, Joe, and we'll... You know, we'll have the conversation. Well, the first conversation was a conversation. Everything on every successive uh, Saturday morning for three months was mu much more like an interrogation. It was short, clipped questions, uh, silence, or uh huh, mm -hmm, next question. He would go on and, and keep pressing so, on this. Stuff. So where, did this, where did this take place? And this Joe guy, did he tell you who he was with? Yeah, uh, ultimately, what happened is this was, you know, I was getting it just like we're talking, except it wasn't video. I was getting these phone calls in the morning and he disappeared after three months. That means the calls stopped coming in. And then it wasn't until late August that the phone rang again. It was Joe. It's me, Joe, he said. And I said, yeah, I know. How are you? And he says, well, look, are you still willing to talk to me? Because he knew he was he was a kind of brusque, rough fellow. And I said, yeah, it's been great. And how are you doing? He says, never mind. I'll just tell you now who I am and about your Billy Meyer case. And I said, okay, who are you, Joe? And he says, go to your computer and open your email. So I open up the email and he has photographs of tabletops with a vast number of citations, all, you know, nicely arranged and close-ups on these citations. So I could be sure to see that this was not uh, something he had printed off uh, and created himself. These were from the USAFOSI. They were from the Department of Defense. Of Defense. <laughs> no offense, man. And his name was Joe Tisk. And Joe had been one of their very top, top investigators and supervisors for a number of years. You know, he terminated his service there some years ago as well. But he had nothing but glowing recommendations. He was the real deal, a man literally tasked with protecting the security of the United States. He had no other interest in UFOs when he came upon this online. He's retired. He's an expat. He lives overseas. He's surfing through the Internet. He finds this and he thinks, well, this has got to be baloney. So he, after we see that, he says, have you seen my citation? I said, yeah. He says, okay, now delete it. I said, okay, I'll delete it. You know, I wanted to save it all, of course, but he said, delete it. And um, then it was, okay, I was the former top USAF OSI, Department of Defense investigator, supervisor, hundreds of cases, vetted them personally. Uh, I would deal with people who were aspiring to hire office, people who were already in the government and the military who could have their fingers on the nuclear trigger. And so I ferreted out moles and goes through the whole thing. And I said, OK, yeah. He says, as for your Billy Meyer UFO case, all I will tell you to begin with is it's 100 percent ironclad authentic. And I will take on any skeptics on your behalf, which he did. And from there, he explained how and why he deduced that this was accurate and real and true. So I hear from him maybe a week or 10 days later, he's talked to a couple skeptics. And he says to me, uh, I, I talked to this guy, Kevin Randall, and the other guy, Mahesh in India. I can't talk to these people anymore. They don't know anything. They're not investigators. They they make up strange you know, stories and what have you. Um, so here's what I'm doing. I've written an article for your blog. 
And this is the means by which anybody without having any background in uh, criminal law, forensics, investigation, research, they can march through the steps. They're pretty straight ahead. And the reasoning, I give examples. It's all it's all there for anybody. And he, he did. He sent me the article. It's up on our website. It, it basically stopped any, what you might say was, a, you know, a serious uh, threat from any skeptic. Sure, they still come at us and, you know, they can be very unpleasant, but they simply don't have any credible arguments against this material. That doesn't stop people from making wild claims about it. But Joe Tisk basically ended the skeptical challenge because this is a guy at the top level of, you know, he wasn't a, uh, you know, a military guy. I think he was a civilian, but he was at the top level of intelligence. And that was it. Now, also, we found that uh, the late U.S. astronaut Gordon Cooper had also come forward. There's a short video clip. We have it where he says, this man, Billy Meyer in Switzerland, he's meeting with extraterrestrials. His photos are authentic. I don't know why people accuse him of hoaxing. So that and a whole bunch of other independent analyses and what have you, the case is real, is my own conclusion as well. I knew that even before Joe Tiss came along, but for people that will, oh, I've heard it's a hoax, you know, this whole thing, because people don't know how to think, quite frankly, and you have to walk them through it. And if they are patient enough to to learn how to think and to uh, even just to process this information, they will understand what we're presenting. So here we got uh, your website pulled up, uh, theyflyblog.com, and it's one of two. You can also go to theyfly.com. You'll uh, and here we're seeing some of the, for those that uh, don't know the Billy Meyer story, can you give a quick synopsis uh, sure. of what, what, what went down? Sure. Uh, Billy Meyer claims that since he's a five-year-old boy in Switzerland, 1942, he's an 85-year-old man, uh, that he has been voluntarily meeting face-to-face -face with human beings from another star system and these are not, you know, the so-called evil aliens, most of which is pretty made up. It's not that there aren't some bad folks out there, but uh, the UFO field is just filled with this information. So as a five-year-old boy, he begins meeting with these people face-to-face. -face. The first uh, extraterrestrial man that contacts him tutors him for 11 uh, Earth years, if you will, and I say that for a specific reason. And then there's a when that man passes away, there's a, a woman who takes up those contacts for 11 years and then another. And to date, he's met with over probably over 50 people from primarily one, but a couple of different extraterrestrial space traveling races. And uh, the man's life has been the most... Uh, incredible life I've ever learned about, the ups and the downs. Uh, I don't know how people would have, anybody would have handled what he's gone through so far. And he's done it uh, without complaint. He always had the opportunity to not pursue these contacts, and but he always came back to it. And there were times when he thought he would not go any farther. Now, some of the information I read about Billy is that he's almost like a Nostradamus-like figure, and he and and the, and that's what you uh, convey these messages uh, to people here in America. And it's basically he's made. Are they predictions per se, or is this information that was told to him that was they knew was going to happen, and then he said these things are going to happen? How did that roll out? Well, there's there's several ways, and he's. You could say he's Nostradamus on steroids, nothing cryptic. That you don't have to try to figure out what the bird flies between the, the metal thing or other. They, they spell it out. And the way it's done, according to this information, and I say according to the information in the case, when I personally cannot prove or disprove that that's uh, how something is done or that the information is true, we haven't been able to verify it, what have you. We have the results, and this is how it goes. According to this information, uh, the Pleiaran extraterrestrials are space and time traveling people. And uh, they have the ability to go back into the past to see things as they actually occurred and to see certain things at some times in the future, not just randomly, but under very specific controls, if you will. 
They also have people in their world, as we have Billy Meyer, who have their own consciousness-related, sometimes called spiritual abilities. And Meyer himself has some rather fantastic abilities in terms of being able to see events and or calculate them through what could be called the accurate Kabbalah, uh, which apparently the Kabbalah that we know of is not quite accurate. I don't know that to be a fact. It's I'm just relaying. So Meyer's knowledge that he's received from the extraterrestrials pertains to things uh, about every planet in our solar system, black holes, time and space, things and places that we don't know that exist, true histories going back millions of years into the past, and things, of course, what interest people the most, the predictions and prophecies pertaining to events yet to come, but that since they've been published and available going back at least 30, 40 years or so, we have seen them march forward. We now have, just from the what's been translated into English, Meyer's published probably 45, 50,000 pages in German. We probably have 8,000 pages or so in English. And from that, so far, we have over 250 specific error-free examples of prophetically accurate, never needed of correction or redaction information, scientific, geopolitical, medical, economic, uh, environmental Meyer is the first person on record to forewarn of man-made unnatural climate change, global warming, massive destruction, specific events that have occurred, others that are coming. It goes on and on. How come he hasn't hit the lottery? Because that's not the focus of his, his mission. When you can travel in time and space collecting pieces of green paper and you know metal coins, while important for navigating this world, pale in comparison to that kind of knowledge and experience. Yeah, so the Myers contacts are, are not with aliens the way most people think aliens are. You know, they're not like creepy looking gray people with long fingers and gigantic eyes, these are humans or humanoids. Humans, yes, and humanoid uh, people, you could say that as well. The conception that people have of the so-called evil aliens, the gray, the grays, uh, the android, they were androids, they weren't the extraterrestrial creators of the craft they were in. They were androids such as that crashed at Roswell and other places. These were not the kind of, uh, entities, to use that word, that Billy Meyer meets with, who are fully flesh and blood human beings, far more advanced, albeit, but certainly, you know, flesh and blood human beings. And the whole evil alien agenda, that goes back actually around the First World War is when people noticed craft. In During the First World War, the, the protagonists were seeing craft above the battlefields, and they each thought it was secret weapons of the others, until they were able to logically deduce nobody's being attacked. This doesn't come from here. President Wilson was the first one then to become aware of this. Various world leaders, even those who were opposing each other, entered into a conspiracy of silence because to reveal that there was something here, someone else here, over whom nobody had any constraint and control, that would be too destabilizing. And then when Franklin Delano Roosevelt was in office, he... Uh, had his intelligence services contact a very famous at the time producer, actor, narrator named Orson Welles and H.G. Wells, different spelling, had written War of the Worlds and he had Orson Welles narrate and do that radio program. Both of these people were under threat of death, silence, etc. If they didn't do what they were told, their families would be killed. This was in the Meyer material, this goes back, and you can do with that what you will, but the point is that that's when the evil alien idea was really promoted and developed upon. Nowadays, all of the labile, in incapable of thinking wannabes who uh, clog up the research and the, the reporting on, on this, and they've changed the term to UAP because People nowadays need phenomena. They don't know what it is, and they don't care. They want to fantasize. And the Meyer material, which is literally the key to our future survival, is above the pay grade of the majority of people 
in this country and elsewhere who are occupied with thinking that UFO, UAP is an entertainment industry, which is what the government's made it into. Yeah, but now the big reveal, right? The, the, we have the UFO research group in the government revealed. They've revealed all the some of the top secret footage of these craft. And I think that what's important that you said in the very beginning uh, is that these craft have been around forever. We've known about them. They, they haven't attacked anyone. In fact, they're never even threatening. They actually try to be as least threatening as possible when they're seen. So that is a very interesting point here. Uh, so when what we know, like in the if you go all in the conspiracy theories of all the aliens, because I live here uh, right near the San Luis Valley. I'm 10 miles from Dulce. I'm literally at the alien underground bunker. Um, this is all I think if a fantasy made up as a psyop by the CIA disinformation. It's if so many people believe it, it's probably disinformation. And the things like cattle mutilations and abductions, if they're actually happening, it's the government. You're right. And what you were just saying, the, the so-called government reports are utter nonsense. The committees are frauds. I had left a phone message for a guy named a representative, Andre Carson. He was setting up a subcommittee on counterintelligence, counterespionage, counterterrorism, whatever, all this stuff. And I didn't expect to hear back because I've reached out to scientists, to so-called UFO researchers, to government people. There's never a response because they're all in it for their private profit and for control when you get to the government. But I get a call back from a woman, Area Code 202. I was about to hang up on her because I thought it was spam. And the woman mentioned something about the UFO stealth photos and that's why I had contacted uh, Representative Carson. I discovered these never before seen photos that are connected to the, this case. And she said, uh, we got your message and we're interested. Would you send us whatever you have? There are these photos. So I sent the digital photos and some information. She said, I'll pass them up the chain. I said, okay, thank you very much. And, and then I sent her some of the prophetic material about the destruction of this country that's coming because, because of the insidious, crazy policies that have been in place actually for a very long time. People don't know. It goes back much farther than people think. For world domination, aggression, violence, war. That's the industry. And that's why these committees are running around in circles, basically to pump up war hysteria, more weapons, threats from outer space, it's all nonsense. So anyhow, I followed up by sending her some of those prophecies about the destruction of this country that's coming because of these lunatics. And she said, oh, that's very interesting. I'll pass it up the chain. Naturally, I'd never heard anything from these people. And I didn't really expect after that. They know about the Meyer case at the higher levels of government intelligence, military intelligence. A lot of people that are just horsing around in these committees it's all this ooh, wow, you know, stuff. They don't necessarily know. So when something like that comes through, it doesn't get passed around up the chain. Uh, it isn't shared freely with people who would go, what? Why didn't they know about this? I did happen to get an, in an interview, September 9th or whatever, uh, Clayton Morris from Redacted, I think you know, uh, said, hey, would you come on? I'm interested in the Billy Meyer case. Now 475,000 views later, a lot more people know about it. And as I certainly hope through, through you and your network, people will start to look for the sake of, of your survival. And I know that's something that you're into in a major way. And there's another redacted thing coming out this weekend or something. I, I did another interview. Point being, we are flooded with disinformation. People like Lou Elizondo, who are shills for the intelligence community, people like Chris Mellon, banker, defense industry, they both know the Meyer case is real, and I have evidence of that. They will not talk about it publicly. They will not acknowledge it because this is about the, also the coming global financial crash, the dispossession of the American people, and the coming civil wars here, all of which Billy Meyer has predicted for decades. Mm. So the extraterrestrials that he's talking to, are they on this planet? Are they off planet? I mean, are they coming in a ship to talk to him? How does that work? All of the above and some of the above. Uh, their first uh, contacts here, they came always in craft. 
Initially, it took them about seven hours, they said, according to this information, to traverse the 500 light years to get here. Then they had it down to seven minutes. They also, uh, in the ensuing period of time, developed that kind of instantaneous transmission thing, Stargate kind of stuff that in our sci-fi. They had bases on our planet actually for a very long time. These contacts with Meyer are preceded by contacts with six other prophet contactees going back 13,500 years. People whose names we know, such as Enoch, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Emmanuel, the real name of the man falsely called Jesus Christ, for whom there is zero biographical information, by the way, and even Mohammed. These other six people were contactees like Meyer, and they all had the same task, and that was to bring a teaching to this world about life, how it works, how thinking works, in order to help us not go down the deadly rabbit hole of politics and religion that we nonetheless have succumbed to. So the, Meyer is also the co-discoverer. Let's see if it's where the heck it is. One second. Um, yeah, here it is. Meyer is the co-discoverer of what's called the Talmud, Emmanuel, the teaching of Emmanuel, the true teaching and writing upon which the book of Matthew is based. That is one heck of a book. Is that 700 pages? No, oh, something like that. Yeah. Well, that's because also there's German on this side and then the English uh, mm. translation faces on the right. And that's also true. The, the newest book is, you know, we have books. I have not been the most active to get my book or get Billy's book promoter, but this one is the newest one. It's called From the Depths of Space. And it's about how the people live in their world. Primarily, it's other information, but how these people live in their world. And <laughs> Meyer's his books are just a whole other level. And the Talmud is extremely important. By the way, you're showing that if you click on yeah. Beam Ship Gallery up there in the green bar. Beam Ship Gallery. Yeah. Click on that. And then you start to scroll down. Meyer has taken over 1,200 clear predominantly, but there's a nighttime photo to the right and some nighttime photos, including photos from the craft above the earth. And these were all pre-digital, as his films were and as his video is, all pre-digital photos independently analyzed since 1978 by numerous experts using state-of-the-art equipment from that time and up right up to this day. Uh, that center picture, that's, it's okay, keep going. <laughs> you might as well let people see. This yeah, well, that one... With yeah, that's a composite yeah. of five of the photos I discovered showing a UFO interacting with a then top secret stealth. This is what I made available to the government. There is no threat from these people. And unfortunately, so, as long as people get into this ooh, ah, dazzled by, uh, you know, all the nonsense stuff, we will miss the opportunity to get some control over our lives. Because as long as this government pursues this phony threat thing and gets people all riled up and more weapons. Uh, Could Meyer be one of the greatest uh, post-production photographers in Germany <laughs> that, and he actually found a way to, to fake this? I mean, cause <laughs> it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's, it's such an old photo and to see the F one fourteen A's or, or, or these are F one seventeens, the first. Yes. Step, and yes. it's just amazing. Well, I'll tell you, uh, to answer your question. Did anyone investigate Meyer and see if he had a photographic lab or <laughs> oh, something? Oh, yeah, sure, of course. Okay. That started in 19, about 1978, and they uh, used state-of-the-art technology. They even had models made, brought them to Switzerland, where he lives, suspended the models in the same location, photographed models, had computers analyze the model photos, had them analyze Meyer's photos, uh, Analysis has gone up on up, up until I think even this day, people are still going through it. No hoaxing. Meyer never developed his own photos. He would take, uh, you know, photographs, 35 millimeter photographs and drop them off at the uh, camera store. Pardon me. And then they would be sent off to Kodak. That produced problems because a lot of them, once people found out 
what he was publishing, uh, one of the you know alphabet organizations started to intercept those films between the camera store and the lab and back to Meyer. And there were photos that were falsified, but never by Meyer. You see this wild looking craft here in the tree. Meyer took 63 photos. Uh, this is a one-armed man day and night photographing this thing. And I just put up a new blog about how, uh, I called it, I think, what was it? The uh, WC UFOs eye test for skeptics and other quacks. So this is a composite. These were taken by the lead military investigator in the case who was assisted by the extraterrestrials at Groom Lake to go, to go and hide himself there because they knew that, that there was test flying going on. And that we know what you claim. These, these look like the, the ship Bo uh, Bob Lazar uh, drew. Well, Bob Lazar found out about the Meyer material. And we have a, a the, online, there was a conversation from 1989 between Bob Lazar and uh, I always forget the guy's name. Uh, Mm. He, he interviewed me, a guy from George Knapp, a Las Vegas reporter. And they're talking about going down to Phoenix, uh, something to do with going to see some of the stuff, Billy Myers photos. And Bob Lazar and he are both, wow, those are some photos and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they knew about this. Now, people say, well, is, you know, what about Bob Lazar? And Billy Meyer was asked that question. He said, well, all I want to say about that is, you know that Bob Lazar is free to go and talk and make his presentations. And it's a very unusual thing that somebody who supposedly would have the restraints from top secret, you know, would be able to be unmolested. That's fine. We don't wish him any, you know, ill will, but people might want to think about that. Meyer has survived 25 attempts in his life. Bob Lazar gets to go on programs and carry on with inconclusive claims and what have you. So people can figure it out for themselves, I think. So that's one of the WC UFO photos, one of 63. There's also a video of that that's pretty mind-blowing. And uh, Billy Meyer is videoing with a pre-digital video camera from about, it looks like to me, maybe 600 feet away from a tree with this in it. It's a different photo. You scroll through, you'll find it. And then he steps into the into the frame there with his 35 millimeter camera to also take photographs of the craft in the distance. So he's in his own video while he's taking photographs and then he zooms in on the craft to get close-ups of it. There it is. That's one of the zoomed in photos. And that's in the film. That's in the video. And that's a real full-size tree. We've had tree experts comment on the trees in the Meyer photos because there's always UFOs and trees in so many. And they've said, well, that's a, you know, there's a pruning mark down there and there's this nesting up there. No, nobody makes model or miniature trees with this kind of, you know, details. They make them look nice and regular, but that's a real tree. And it's about 40 feet tall or so, you know, there were two, three different forestry experts who were consulted, interestingly enough, by the man who first heard about the Talmud Emanuel, thought it was a hoax, went to debunk it, and then was the main person to validate it and say, well, this is the original writing that the book of Matthew is I mean, yes, this just goes everywhere. You think I'm just going everywhere. You pull the thread on the sweater that's the Meyer context, and you get the true history of our country, of this world, where it's going, prophecies that have never been wrong, unfortunately for us, because we don't listen, and the clearest photographs and films you will ever see, and yet people chase little tic-tac videos and lights in the sky. Are, uh, are these uh, ETs working with governments, or do they only work with uh, the prophets, or wh however you want to put it? Yes, they don't work. They, there was an outreach in 1979 that went towards the Carter administration. Basically, uh, it said we would, you know, make contact with your government. Our intermediary will be Mr. Meyer. You have to agree to not, to, you know, bother him or try to molest their ships. But there were other conditions. And basically, it was turned down. It was turned down in part because the person who was tasked with bringing it to the Carter administration was also a CIA person who sabotaged that outreach. They do not meet 
or directly contact any of our governments. There are too few people in any of the governments that are capable of handling this and they know it. And most of the governments are so corrupt that it's, you know, it's pointless. It's truly pointless. And our governments will, will never, and our scientists will never be contacted. They've, we've missed that opportunity. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. So if you guys are interested in this story or anything that Mr. Michael Horn has talked about, this is his YouTube channel. Go over there and subscribe there. Now, do you, is this comprehensive? Is this all the Billy Meyer videos, everything? Well, there are other uh, films or videos uh, online of, uh, of Meyer interviews and things. I have a number of really good interviews I did with Meyer. Short clips, some of the interviews were a bit longer, but things that are so pertinent, even pertinent to the so-called Tic Tac video, uh, Meyer six and seven years ago, emphatically saying, do not provoke Russia, do not provoke Russia. Russia doesn't want war because in the prophecies, it shows that we don't learn that lesson and we end up having our country utterly destroyed from within as well as from without. Yeah, I put the Billy Meyer clip that's about a decade old up on your from your website up on Rumble and linked your website. And a lot, Thank uh, you. I think over a thousand people have viewed that in just a day or so. Really? That is send me where, a link. I, I want to see which one. Send me a link. Yeah. Jeez. And it's, it's interesting because it's exactly what you said. It's like, it's from a long time ago. And he's, what he's saying is everything that's happening right now. Of course. It, this is what's and I'm pretty the, sure he didn't hang out with Alex Jones, right? <laughs> Alex Jones has probably had his time looking through the Meyer material and gleaning from it what he would like to claim as his own. Alex Jones's mistake was that he made it all about rabble rousing for profit instead of telling all the truth for the sake of the truth, in my opinion. Um, the, what I was about to say is the prophetic information, such as what you can see in the video, whichever one you posted, is what I call the higher standard of proof. Yes, the photos, singularly authentic, some within 15 and 20 feet, mind-boggling. Most people can't grasp it because they're lost in fantasy. But when you get to the prophetic information, geopolitical, environmental, scientific, medical, economic, what's come, and you see everything unfolding error-free, he's never had to, he doesn't publish theories, and never had to retract a word of anything, and this is the higher standard of proof. Copyrights verified. I've had a, I had a kind of friendly, hostile, retired judge take me on on something in Las Vegas about this material. And it took five minutes for him to completely flip and say, OK, uh, you're right. You prevail over NASA. With it. I, I brought up some Myers NASA information. Give me everything. I want the books, the films and all. So for people who can think, who understand a copyright, what a copyright represents. Simple things. You don't have to get caught up in UFOs. Frankly, there's nothing we can do with UFOs except be fascinated and maybe learn certain things. But we're not going to have them. We're not going to be on them. You're not meeting with anybody from them. You're not channeling extraterrestrials for the people out in the world. I just say this. Get your heads on straight is what I like to tell people and find out about your future survival. It's threatened. You, you know, the real messages here are also common, I'm sure, to your work, Diamond. Come together with like-minded, healthily, you know, interdependent relationships. Work with each other to provide to, to, for the, this is for the survivors, the future survivors of what is now pretty much unstoppable in many ways. And I'm not a doom and gloomer. I, I used to do new age comedy. I wrote a song called uh, Earth Changes. Earth Changes, you're cracking me up. I'm starting to hear about all sorts of weird stuff. It's the bombs, it's the comets, it's the dark days upon us, or so say the folks who all quotes Nostradamus. You know, it was all tongue in cheek stuff. I'll send you. I'll send you I'm about you. to interview right after you, uh, the front man for a band called Five Times August that does songs like that. Really? Yeah, activist songs. Oh, well, activist. It's funny because, I mean, I have, I'll send you some links to songs. You can see what you think. But I did new age comedy back in the 80s where I was doing send ups and everything. And I was still, I was doing my presentations in the Meyer case because I want people to see, you know, 
the funny part of life at that time it was all new age stuff, which is a lot of lunacy, but there was good stuff, good intentions. And then you've got to get into finding out more about what life's about and how to think. And that's where this material clears your sinuses broadly. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for coming on the show. Guys out there listening, if you want to check out the videos, it's theyfly.com. If you want to get some of those gigantic books, also theyflyblog.com is where the books are. And there's a couple other shops where you can get, I don't know, Billy Meyer stuff. Um, yeah. Good luck with your redacted piece. That's thank where you. I heard about you. And, and thank you for coming on the show. Maybe we'll have you on in the future. My thanks for, for doing this. Really, it's appreciated. Let me tell you. All right. Thank Very you, Michael. Much. Be safe. Thank you.